Looking for alternatives to the big two? Wondering what's new this new comic book day? I am Dodgy from Comic Crusaders and this is Spitfire. Before we take the ride, please click like and subscribe to get more from Comic Crusaders and don't forget to check us out at comiccrusaders.com. And now we're going to jump into the new comic book day Spitfire honorable mentions. So these are for the licensed products, beginning with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 10, The New Day Power, um, Power of Positivity number 2 from Boom. The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers were also by Boom. There's a um, nice variant cover there with the... Um, All right, going to take two. Sorry about this, guys. So again, take two. So five, four, three, two, one. Looking for alternatives to the big two. Wondering what's new, this new comic book diet. Comic... <coughs> oh, my goodness. Sorry, I'm going to take three. Take three, five, four, three, two, one. Looking for alternatives to the big two, wondering what's new this new comic book day. I am Dodgy from Comic Crusaders and this is Spitfire. Before we take the ride, please click like and subscribe to get more from Comic Crusaders and check us out at comiccrusaders.com. Now, let's go. We're going to start off with the Spitfire's license honorable mentions, which begins with Mighty Morphin number 10 by Boom. WWE a New Day Power of Positivity number 2. I like this cover, this nice variant. And now we have The Shape of Our Vera trade paperback by Dynamite. Firefly Unification War trade paperback volume 3 by Boom. Kiss Phantom Obsession number 1 by Dynamite. Nice J. Lee cover. And then we have the variant and my little pony friendship of pa uh, friendship of magic number 101 by idw nice to see them in the hundreds and lastly master universe revelation number two by dark horse now we're moving on to the publishers beginning with 2000 ad with hershey disease trade paperback this is set in Judge Dredd's Mega City. This is a solo story of Dredd's ally, Barbara Hershey. A Blaze bring us Captain Harlock, Space Pirate number three, the third issue of Leiji Matsumoto's um, iconic manga. Harlock and Acadia face a new Maison threat. Some nice variants there. They blaze do some really great variants. There's more if you look, check out your local comic book shop. Aftershock Comics, they bring us a few, few books this week. Starting off is Rainbow Bridge Graphic Novel, an adventure title by Steve Orlando. Losing Your Pet is Hard. Imagine a, a magical bri a rainbow bridge that can bring you both back together. That'll be nice. I really miss my dog. Now we have Ken Peasy, number one. A comedy thriller about Sonny Campisi, a young man who happens to be a fixer for the mob. He'll come and collect. But this looks like a different type of world that he's in. Very um, fantasy driven there. And now we have Clans of Bellari number two. A Cosmo uh, sci-fi series by Rob and Peter Blackie, who both wrote and created Frontier on Netflix with art duties by Daniel Main. Bunny Mask number three. The horror book is back. Uh, bad things happen when one wears the mask, but there are some findings of the origin of the mask. You just got to read this issue to find out. Albatross Funny Books bring us a graphic novel this week, and that is, did you hear about what Eddie Gein done? Who is Eddie Gein? He's, he's an inf infamous serial killer in the 1950s. His story is being told by true crime writer Harold Schechter which is co-written and illustrated by Eric Power from Goon. So really great art there, I could imagine. And now we have AWA Utshot. They bring us 
Fight Girls number two of five by Frank Cho. Outrage! This is a tale of ten women who duke it out over five issues. What is the stipulation? Behemoth. They bring us Junkie Cable number three, a mega title by Dodo Claudia Avella about two criminals and lovers who search out for their uh, missing stepdaughter, Siri. What troubles have they landed in this issue? Cinnamon number one. This isn't your ordinary house cat, neither is Garfield or Heathcliff. This makes you wonder what kind of imagination cats have. This is a very original and you've got to check it out. I love this variant cover. Boom Studios. They bring us Eve number four, a post-apocalyptic era where the ice caps have melted and most of the humanity was lost to a hidden disease. Uh, we join the mysterious Eve as she embarks on an adventure. Looks really fun. I like the covers, especially this one. And then we have Maimo number two from the vision of do it or another do it or uh, Sass Milledge. After the loss of her grandmother, her Maimo, what adventures can one young witch Orla find in her Mamo's legacy? Caliber Comics, they bring us a trade, which is H.P. Lovecraft's The Tomb, a horror title based on Lovecraft's short story of the same name. Jervis Studley is obsessed with talking to ghouls, or is he mad? One would wonder. And Dark Horse, they bring us a few titles this week. Kicking us off is The Secret Land number three. During World War II, there are some other foreign invaders from another world, birthed by Nazis and Antarctica of all places. The un unbelievable un unteens world of Black Hammer number one. Jeff Lemire and Tyler Crook are back to bring us more tales of Black Hammer. What if a comic creator um, receives a visit from one of their own creations? That would be very, very scary. Imagine meeting the Hulk if you're Stan Lee. And there's a variant cover. Now we have Hellboy and BPRD, The Secret of Chesbro House number two. Hellboy creator Mike Minola teams up with longtime collaborator Christopher Golden and artist extraordinaire Sean McManus to bring you a brand new frightful delight from the world of Hellboy. And now we have the House of the Lost Horizons number four. Or the, sorry, there's a variant cover there for Hellboy and BPRD. Yes, the House of the Lost Horizons, a Sarah Jewel mystery. Uh, crime horror with Hellboy creator um, Mignola teaming up with Chris Robinson with art by Leila Del, Del Duca. Our team, of sleuths are caught, um, our team of sleuths caught their thieves, but the culprit they finally discovered is not whom they suspected. That's always the case with a mystery. And now we have Dynamite Entertainment, and they bring us three books this week. Kicking us off is Betty Page and the Cursed Banshee, number three. The Pinup Queen Adventure is back. Betty and the Banshee seem to be become as one as the curse unfolds around their hero in high heels. And now we have Red Sonia, Black, White and Red, and an anthology story. This is issue number two by superstar talents such as David F. Walker, John Boy Myers and Jeff Parker. And there's the cosplay variant. There's more variants when you check out your local comic book store. And now we have the Death Defying Devil, our home trade paperback. This collects issues number one to five from 2019 by, um, sale, um, by Gail Simone and artist Walter Giovanni. The spiked belt, the boomerang bandit is back. An old, an old golden age character. Um, it's good to see golden age characters making an impact now, especially in the indie scene. Now we have first publications. They bring us two books this week, and these are art books. So kicking us off is The Good Girl Art of Bruce Tim, Naughty and Nice. So in Batman, um, the Batman animated series uh, co-creator and basically whom the art is based on. And now we have another Frank Cho book, Outrage. This is called Pencil and Ink. So Again, um, Frank Cho drawing girls. So this is another art book of his. 
And now we're going on to Heavy Metal Magazine. They bring us three books this week. And first is Savage Circus, number five. The police are outnumbered as their town of Basin Bay is under attack due to the heist. You know, obviously the criminals trying to, you know, rob a, rob a stagecoach, which found out it was full of monsters and animals, hence the Savage Circus title. Then moving on to Rise, number two, uh, runs in the family as... George C. Romero, the son of zombie dad George A. Romero, tells a story before the worst night on earth that led to the birth of the modern zombie. And now we have Never Never Number Two, a place where kids ne uh, never grow up and adults are the enemy. This is basically Peter Pan meets the Hunger Games with a dose of Lord of the, Fri Lord of the Flies, basically telling an old school story, but in the modern age. IDW bring us one book this week, and that is Canto 3, Lionhearted number 2. Our favorite Clockwork Knight is back. Canto finds allies of the unusual kind. Image bring us a fair few books this week, and to kick us off is Birthright Trade Paperback Volume 10, a fantasy title by Joshua Williamson, known for his run on The Flash and Flash Year One. This... Um, this uh, volume is number 10. It collects issues uh, number 46 to 50. And now we have Bitterroot number 15. This is set in the 1920s New York by um, creators of the Power Man and Iron Fist for Marvel. That is David F. Walker and Sanford Green. This is the conclusion of the legacy story. I really dig the art in this book, I must say. Now the variant there for you. And now we have Silver Coin number five by artist Michael Walsh. Um, did you know the previous um, issues of this book were written by Jeff Lemire, Kelly Thompson, Ch Chip Zarsky, and Ed Brisson? Well, it's true. But this final issue is actually written by uh, Michael Walsh, who's the artist throughout. So it'd be really interesting to pick up this trade to get this superstar talent telling the, you know, the ongoing story. And now we have the six sidekicks of Trigger Keaton, the action comedy mystery with Kicks On, a uh, title that kicks on. The sidekicks are now looking for a new recruit. Um, and this one actually knows martial arts. So, you know, there actually be, you know, quite the force to be dealt with. There's another variant cover. I like that one. And now we have Deep Beyond, uh, number seven of a 12 part miniseries. In the not-too-distant future, Earthlings dwell below the sea, a sci-fi adventure by Mirko Adolfo. The nice variant covers. And then we've got Man, uh, Man Among Ye, number six. And Bonnie and her crew uh, find themselves a new ally to find hidden treasure, but this can this new friend be trusted. That actually really looks good. I like that cover. And then we have Ordinary Gods number two from sci-fi maestro um, Kyle Higgins. When five gods are trapped, who would be summoned to be their savior? Well, it's on the shoulders of a 22-year-old young man. Christopher is no ordinary god. And lastly, we've got Lady um, Mechanica uh, Trade Paperback Volume 1 for fans of steampunk by Joe Benitez. Um, writer and artist consist of issues number zero to five. You know, if you want to try something new, it's a great starting point. And then we've got Oni Press. And Oni Press bring us two books this week, two trades. First one is um, Jonna and the Unpossible Monster on Monsters, uh, written by Laura Samney, co written and illustrated by Chris Samney. His Captain America work is personally one of my favorites. Um, you know, um, Rainbow and her ridiculously strong sister Jonah wander through a shattered world overrun by giant monsters in search for their father. And then we have Cheer Up and Pom Poms, a story of a lesbian and a trans girl cheerleader who rekindle their friendship after many, many changes in their lives. It's a coming of age um, queer story. And now we have Scout Comics. And Scout Comics bring us something that looks pretty cool. And this is Count Draco Knuckle Duster, number one, 
from the Black Caravan imprint. It looks amazing, I must say. I really like the cover. Um, this is following up from the Phantom Starkiller series, um, a new sci-fi horror odyssey by Peter Goral and Joseph Schmalke. So it's the same. It's the same creators of Phantom Starkiller. I don't know. I just find their covers absolutely amazing. So definitely worth a pick up, especially if you want to get number one. And now we have Wake Entertainment, and Wake bring us Essentia number seven. You know, I really, really like this cover. Um, this this book, this story is actually set 150 years from now, lies in the city of Essentia, which towers above its sister city, Bethany, with dominance. So obviously there's a bit of power in that in that city compared to what you get in Bethany. So definitely an interesting story. Um, but you know, that ends it. So that's it for um for Spitfire, thank you so much for joining me on this um, awesome adventure going through indie comics. Nothing better than checking out something new in your local comic book store. A few number ones. So if you're looking for something fresh, you've never read before, um, do yourself a favor and check it out. And don't forget, guys, this weekend is free comic book day. Do yourself a favor. Pick up some of these books. These indie titles will begin in um, free comic book day or they will just be reissued on free comic book day like sample size so you get like 5 10 20 pages to actually delve in and go you know what this actually looks cool i'm gonna buy the i'm gonna buy the trade oh number two is out i might try and get number one as well just so you can go take yourself on that new indie comics journey uh but thank you so much for joining me on spitfire um Please uh, leave a comment, click like and subscribe. Do you get more from Comic Crusaders? Check out our other podcasts as well, our other videos on YouTube. Uh, but thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you all next week. And don't forget to check me out and also on um, the Yenna Wepa show here on Comic Crusaders. All right. Thank you, guys, and have a great night. Ciao. Thank you, and we hope you've enjoyed this Comic Crusaders production. For real-time news on all things pop culture, please feel free to follow us on social media. For articles, original content, merchandise, and more, please go to www.comiccrusaders.com. Also follow along with all of the websites of the Comic Crusaders family. As always, if you like this content, please click like and subscribe to the Comic Crusaders YouTube channel.